Good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. I'm Councilmember Daniel Drum and I'm the chair of the committee. We have been joined by Councilmember Brad Lander, Councilmember Francisco Moya, Councilmember Keith Powers, Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer, Councilmember Robert Cornegie, Councilmember Farrah Lewis, Minority Leader Steve Matteo, Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember Barry Grudenchik, and Councilmember um, Mark Jonine. Today, the committee will be voting on three items, proposed intro 113A and two Article 11 property tax exemptions. In addition, we will be holding a public hearing on intro 1854 to authorize the downtown Flushing Transit Hub Business Improvement District to amend its district plan. Proposed intro 113A, sponsored by Councilmember Lander, would require the establishment of an interagency task force consisting of representatives of at least seven mayoral agencies and offices to create and implement a public online capital projects database. The database would consist of an interactive and searchable public database updated on a triannual basis containing information about capital projects citywide. The bill would also require an advisory board consisting of representatives from the mayor's office, the council, and the controller to advise the task force on the development of the public online capital projects database. We first heard an earlier version of this bill almost exactly one year ago, and I'm going to invite Councilmember Lander to speak in favor of his bill. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Drum, and I also want to thank uh, Chair Gibson for her work leading the capital, uh, the Finance Capital Subcommittee, which has been really important in helping push this issue forward. Um, every member of this council and many members of the public and press have had their challenges moving a capital project forward. You're not sure how long it's taking, how much it's costing. Um, as I was actually talking to Minority Leader Matteo this morning, some good steps have been taken in this administration to drive some improvements uh, at DDC and the Mayor's Office of Operations, but we still have a long way to go in a city that's facing the challenges of climate resiliency, of transit, of schools, of a whole range of capital projects. And it remains true that about half of our capital projects uh, are reported to be either behind time or over budget. And there is no place right now that you can go to get public, visible, transparent, comprehensive information about all the city's capital projects. Mayor's Office of Operations maintains a capital projects dashboard that covers projects over $25 million, but that's only about 3% of the city's projects and not most of the ones that council members are the most focused on and the communities are often focused on. Parks has their own system, SCA has their own system, but for many agencies there is no such system, and you can't compare across those systems to figure out what kinds of projects are costing too much, which agencies are doing well. So for purposes of transparency, uh, for purposes of accountability, for purposes of cost saving, uh, and for purposes of improving projects management, the creation of this online capital projects tracking system uh, will make a big difference in fiscal accountability, in transparency, in improved capital projects management, something that we really sorely need. Uh, there'll be this interagency task force to get it done. What they have to do is really spelled out very clearly in the bill. There's an advisory board that council members and others will be on to make sure it moves forward. Um, I want to thank the administration for their partnership in making it happen. Uh, Office of Management and Budget has actually agreed until the tracker is done to start putting some additional details and make them available, downloadable via the city's financial management system through the Capital Projects Detail Report, and that has actually already started, so a, a really good show of good faith, um, as well as a real commitment to move forward to get this done in a way that I think will have real good long-term benefits to the city. So uh, now that she's here, I want to thank again uh, Chair Gibson because the Council's creation of our uh, Capital Finance Subcommittee has been a valuable way of moving this issue forward. Um, I also want to thank from our team Rebecca Chasen, uh, Nathan Toth, and Stephanie Ruiz. Um, from the administration side, Kenny Grace, Dan Steinberg, Josh Seidis, and Jamie Torres Springer, uh, and from my team, Steph Sokowski, and my former policy director, Annie Levers. Um, like for many of you, when you're watching a capital project drag on and on, this one has been something we've been working on for years and years, but I'm excited today that we're moving it forward, and, and I hope that you will vote aye on intro 113. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councilmember Lander. We have been joined by our uh, chair on the, uh, capital, on, the, on the Capital Subcommittee for Finance, Vanessa Gibson, and by Councilmember Robert Cornegie. Uh, next, we have two Article 11 property tax exemptions. 528 East 11th Street in Councilmember Rivera's district would receive a full 40-year Article 11 exemption to preserve 
33 units of affordable home ownership. The Carroll Gardens portfolio in Councilmember Landers District would receive a full 40-year Article 11 exemption to preserve 31 units of affordable rental housing. Uh, council members are, both the council members are supportive of the projects in their respective districts. Uh, I want to say that Councilmember Rivera has uh, submitted written testimony and it will be put into the record. Um, did you want to speak anything on that? Okay, I'm, thank I'm you. I'm in favor, but do not need to speak on it. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Lander. Uh, lastly, the committee will be holding a public hearing on introduction number 1854, which would authorize the downtown of Flushing Transit Hub bid in Councilmember Coos District to amend its district plan, including authorizing a budget increase, extending the district's boundaries, providing additional services, and modifying additional uh, existing services, changing the method of district charge assessment, and increasing the maximum to be expended for improvements. More information regarding the requested changes can be found in the committee report prepared by the Finance Division and the report prepared by the City Planning Commission. Councilmember Ku supports the requested changes. We will, hear test we will hear from any witnesses who wish to testify. Once we have heard any testimony, we will then adjourn the hearing for at least 30 days to allow any property owner within the proposed area of the bid to file an objection to the extension of the bid with the city clerk. In the absence of objections filed, either by a majority of all the impacted property owners or by the property owners owning a majority of the assessed value of the property within the proposed bid, the committee and the full council may adopt legislation expanding the bid. In order to do so, the committee and the full council must be prepared to answer the following four questions in the affirmative. Were all notices of hearings for all hearings required to be held published and uh, mailed as so required. Does all the real property within the district's boundaries benefit from the establishment or expansion of the district except as otherwise provided by law? In all real property benefited by the, is all real property benefited by the district included within the district? And four, is the establishment or expansion of the district in the best interest of the public? If the committee and the full council find in the affirmative on these four questions, and the number of objections required to prevent the expansion of the bids are not filed, then the legislation can be adopted. Additionally, the committee and the full council must determine that it is in the public interest to authorize an increase in the maximum an annual expenditure amount, that the relevant tax and debt limits will not be exceeded, and that notice of the increased proposed expenditure amount was properly published. For further details on the bid, please refer to the committee report the City Planning Commission report, and the bids proposed district plan. Representatives from the Department of Small Business Services are here to testify and to answer any questions we may have. And I believe that they're going to come up to give testimony. So we have Michael Blaze uh, Backer uh, from the New York, small, New York City Small Business Services. We have uh, Dian Song Yu, Downtown Flushing Transit Hub. And we have Tina Lee, downtown Flushing Transit Hub as well. And we've also been joined by Councilmember Karen Koslowitz and Councilmember Helen Rosenthal. Thank you. Do you affirm that your testimony will be truthful to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Drum and members of the Finance Committee. I am Michael Blaze Backer, Deputy Commissioner of Neighborhood Development at the Department of Small Business Services. I am joined by Lamel Lindsay, Senior Program Manager for Bid Development. We are here to testify in support of the extension of the Downtown Flushing Business Improvement District in Queens. At SBS, we are working hard to open doors for New Yorkers across the five boroughs focusing on creating stronger businesses, connecting New Yorkers to good jobs, and fostering thriving neighborhoods. We believe that the vitality of the city's commercial corridors is a key of achieving this goal, and bids have been valuable and proven partners in small business support, neighborhood revitalization, and economic development across the five boroughs. In addition to our role overseeing and supporting the city's existing network of 76 bids, SBS also supervises the bid formation and expansion process, serving as an advisor and resource for communities interested in planning or expanding bids. 
We are careful to ensure that each steering committee we work with adheres to our planning process and policies, solicits robust community input, and performs extensive outreach to demonstrate broad-based support across all stakeholder groups. Moreover, we are cognizant of the importance and unique nature of each community we insist and aim to create greater capacity and sustainability for the organizations that we support. In 2016, two years after the bid expansion steering committee was initially formed, the downtown Flushing bid was selected by SBS as a partner organization in SBS's inaugural year of its Neighborhood 360 program. Through this program, the downtown Flushing bid and the, General, and the Greater Flushing Chamber of Commerce worked closely with SBS to conduct a commercial district needs assessment, which identified challenges and opportunities in the downtown Flushing area. Equipped with findings from the CDNA and a subsequent Neighborhood 360 grant, the downtown Flushing bid was able to strategically address challenges in the growing commercial areas of the neighborhood and provide services to nearly 1,000 businesses outside of its boundaries, strengthening the relationship between the bid and the wider Flushing community. Furthermore, the grant allowed the bid to hire additional staff to kickstart extensive stakeholder engagement and outreach to successfully document expansion support. Similar to other recent bid expansions, the downtown Flushing expansion effort involved numerous meetings with local stakeholders. After extensive outreach and close coordination with key stakeholders, SBS determined that the documented support among all stakeholder groups, including over 50% of the area's total assessed value signing in favor, was sufficient to submit the application to city planning. As required by law, the Downtown Flushing Expansion Steering Committee mailed the summary of the City Council resolution no less than 10 days and no more than 30 days before today's hearing to the following parties. To each owner of real property within the proposed district at the address shown on the latest City Assessment Roll, to such persons as are registered with the City to receive tax bills concerning real property within the district, and to tenants of each building within the proposed district. Furthermore, SBS arranged for the publication of a copy of the summary of the resolution at least once in the city record. Additionally, I would like to acknowledge and thank Councilmember Peter Ku for his ongoing support of the downtown Flushing bid expansion effort. I would like to acknowledge that the bid expansion effort is also represented here today by the Executive Director of the downtown Flushing bid and members of the Expansion Steering Committee who will also be providing testimony and answering questions. At this time, I'm happy to take any questions you have. Thank you very much. Any questions? Councilmember Gudvenchik. I am I, um, fully in support of this. I worked on the original bid uh, when I served in the New York State Assembly a long, long time ago. Um, my question for you today is the assessment for residency is just a general question. It really has nothing to do um, with this specifically. Residents of the district are assessed at a dollar annually. How is that put in? Do they get it on their tax bill? Is it a separate bill? So I'd hate to see somebody just curious how it works. Sure, yes. No, um, all assessments, whether it's the residential or commercial assessment, show up on uh, a property tax okay. bill. So by resident, it, when you're talking about a resident, like a dollar assessment that's often um, the case, that is uh, per fully residential tax lot in this case. So it's not that uh, residential tenants see that right. anywhere. It's residential property owners in the whoever. So it gets, it's, it's not a separate bill. Exactly. Okay. Uh, it will show up uh, twice, year, essentially, usually twice okay. a year or, th or four times a year, depending on the property uh, and the property tax. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to call up the other two folks who um, Thank you. I mistakenly called earlier. Thank you very much to SBS, Michael uh, Blaze Backer. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to call now Tina Lee from the Downtown Flushing Transit Hub and Dion Song Yu from the Downtown Flushing Transit Hub. You may begin. Just make sure the red light is on on your microphone. Nope, not yet. Hello, good morning. I'm Tina Lee, co-chair of the Flushing Business Improvement District and also chair of the Expansion Steering Committee. I'm also a property owner and business owner within the bid. With the seven train Long Island Railroad and over 20 bus lines, downtown Flushing has the enviable position of never being short of foot traffic. However, with the explosive growth since our founding of the bid in 2003, We've seen increased density in pedestrians, vehicles, as well as businesses within our district, and as a result, a need for expanded services. 
Our steering committee, consisting of both members within the existing bid and the expansion area, recognized the positive impact that the bid's work has had on the quality of life within the downtown district and would like to expand that to our neighboring streets. The proposed expansion allows us to include more businesses within our district to make it more complete and also allows us to provide more comprehensive services. For over 16 years, the bid has worked to support the development of Flushing uh, into a bustling commercial district and dining destination with diverse businesses, including comprehensive medical services, hotels, educational services, as well as uh, financial banks and various real retailers. Through supplemental sanitation, beautification projects, and marketing initiatives, the bid has promoted our community, connected consumers with our local businesses through area guides, and also hosted resource workshops and uh, fairs to bring New York City resources to our local businesses. We look forward to the expansion to allow us to keep pace with the rapid growth of our community and support our business during competitive and challenging environment. Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you in support of the Flushing Bid expansion. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank you for your service to the communities you represent and the city of New York. Thank you. Okay, good. We're going to have questions, but I'm going to go to the next uh, witness. So if you want to start, that would be good. All right. Good morning, uh, Chairman Jerome and uh, members of Finance Committee. My name is Dion Yu. I'm the Executive Director of Downtown Flushing Business. As you know, the, I mean, Downtown Flushing is a full capital of Queens. We have over 1,000 business in Downtown Flushing, with, two, with 200 of them being restaurants. And we are one of the busiest transit hub in, in, uh, in the New York City. Because every day we have over 100,000 people walking on our sidewalks. It's a very busy street, and although our job is very challenging, but we consistently uh, face challenges by providing following service. Because uh, every year we provide over 15,000 hours in the supplemental, uh, supplemental sanitation service. And we also will put up a holiday lighting from November to January. And also we, we will distribute a flushing guide, which uh, will consist of a restaurant guide and a transit guide to our neighbors and uh, to our visitors. And we also have newly added a power wash and graffiti remove functions. So what a bit has been very successful to do those jobs in our district, we have also received uh, complaints or, or requests from our neighbors to extend our service to our neighborhoods, such as Union Street, Prince Street. And uh, based on those feedbacks, we form a committee. A, a steering committee was formed, and we work with SBS and with support of uh, Councilman Ku and uh, everyone else. So, I mean, that's what we, I mean, here's what we did it. So, we proposed the boundaries for the big expansion areas that includes the College Point, Main Street, and the Union Street. And a big expansion area will consist of uh, over 2,000 business, and with uh, 500 of them being on commercial properties. And then we also, uh, want to extend our service, um, such as marketing, beautification, advocacy to uh, a pedestrian manager, a pedestrian management uh, program. So to cover all those additional service, uh, the steering committee has proposed a budget of $1 million. As I mentioned before, with support of Councilman Ku and SBS, we receive a grant to provide a taste of those services to the big expansion areas. And we have received great feedbacks. And everyone is really happy about it. So, uh, but we need to expand the area to consistently, to consistently provide this service to the area for years to come. And that's why we're here to expand the, uh, uh, the bid expansion and uh, which the big expansion will allow us to consistent, and I'm repeating myself, <laughs> to provide those service to our neighbors. So I thank you for your support and we're looking forward to support our community and uh, our local elected officials. All right, thank you. Thank you. I noticed that you put it uh, from College Point Boulevard, Main Street and Union Street. Is it from Northern Boulevard? Oh, uh, what's the um, north-south boundaries? That's a good question. So it would be from Northern Boulevard all the way down to Franklin Avenue. The Franklin, Franklin okay. Yes. Thank you. And um, was the bid involved in the um, expansion of the sidewalks on Main Street? 
Uh, yes, we did, because as a matter of fact, uh, we worked closely with SBS and uh, joined the mainstream whining program. We support our sport business by, by doing all different kind of marketing program and promotion to make sure that our small, uh, our small business are, are not impacted by this uh, uh, sidewalk whining. Overcrowding. Uh, do you know how many people pass through the Main Street subway station every year? Quite a few numbers. I don't, but I can get back to you later. But then again, I do know based on the, the, the New York City at DOT, the last study was done in 2000, 2005, or two, that every day we have uh, over 100,000 more pedestrians. But then again, uh, we are one of those busiest uh, transit hub in New York City. I heard it was like 23 million a year or something like that. that Incredible that, number. I, I would not doubt yeah. that. Because uh, as a transit hub, we have, a, a, we have over um, 23 bus lines, Long Island Railroad, and a seven train. So that number sounds right to me. Yep. Okay. Council Member um, Joe I has questions. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you so much for being here, uh, Mr. Yu and uh, Ms. Lee. Uh, your, your testimony is important to us. I just have a couple of questions for you. The 380 thousand current budget covers how many uh, stores? Uh, I believe the expansion now is going to be 509. Is that the addition? That would be the addition. That's correct. And how many do you currently represent in your we, we currently represent around a total of 1,000 properties with 500 of them being uh, commercial properties. So roughly you cover 500 now and you're going to expand another 500 and the budget is going to be twice what it is currently. That's correct. Can you tell me how you plan on spending that million dollars when it comes to, I'm a true believer in bids. I know how important they are, especially when um, they are promoting the commercial corridors. What dollar amount are you going to be spending on marketing and bringing business into the district? Uh, that's a very good question, especially right now. So we, uh, right now, we, we probably will spend around a 20% what percentage? 20 to 30 percent of the money in the, in the marketing because uh, the nature of a downtown flushing is that it really requires us to spend a lot of money on sanitation. As I keep mentioning the, the phrase that we have over 100,000 people walking on the street alone and with the 23 bus lines, that really brings a tremendous amount of uh, uh, garbage uh, I mean, to our sidewalks. So we really need to spend and a tremendous amount of uh, uh, sanitation costs just to cover that, uh, the basic. But then again, uh, the marketing is also a crucial uh, project that we're working on. Because uh, we're so close to uh, JFK and uh, Milagradia Airport, we really want to make a downtown flush as the first stop when people visit New York City. That's our goal, and we really care about to market our local community. So one of the things that we did is, I mean, for this year, as I said it before, is that we have distributed over 10,000 plus copies of Flushing Guide. That is a guide that with a restaurant guide, you know, with the restaurant over there, we have less than over 200 plus restaurants in that guide. And also in that guide, there's a transit guide. So uh, all those uh, projects are crucial to us and are dear to our heart. Thank you for the explanation. My concern is exactly that, that we don't spend enough promoting our commercial corridors, and instead we subsidize city services, whether it be sanitation or policing, um, that we already pay tax dollars into. Mm -hmm. I would encourage that we continue to promote our small businesses, including the restaurant businesses, which are currently under siege and under threat through the third-party food apps, the Absolutely. ghost kitchens, restaurant, virtual kitchens. That industry is going to be um, in jeopardy um, in the near future unless we become very proactive to preserve their identity and um, the brick-and-mortar establishments uh, before they become off the beaten path uh, through these uh, ghost kitchens. What dollar amount do you spend on security, if any? Uh, well, going forward, I think uh, we have allocated around like five to ten percent of the money into our security. That's uh, part of our pedestrian management. So it's uh, really uh, a mobile uh, pedestrian management uh, program. So yes. we d we don't really have a lot of money for our security. So you're not currently spending any money for security? And no, we're not. Okay. Can I just comment on that? Um, in terms of uh, the safety of the community, we primarily work with the 109th Precinct um, to share information to help uh, keep the community safe and uh, run um, programs with them. 
I would encourage you to continue to work on marketing and bringing business to the air. We understand that a clean commercial corridor is inviting. It's the first interaction they have with the community, and it could make a decision whether or not they return. But f spending that money on city services, whether it be security, sanitation, snow removal um, of the sort, takes away from the intent of what a bid a business improvement district should be. The focus is on how do we market, how do we bring new foot traffic here, how do we bring repeat customers to our commercial corridors. The internet has changed the world. Um, retail is not what it once was. We don't we know changes are coming and bigger changes are coming that are going to undermine this very important tax base that offers services and makes our community so whole. Push back. I am the chair of small business. Every bid is important to me. Chairman, we need to be more attentive to our bids and their needs and how they spend their money and every dollar that they invest back into these bids uh, for improving the amount of shoppers that come to these corridors is a dollar wisely spent. But subsidizing city services from graffiti removal, sanitation, policing or security is not in the best interest of those uh, small mom and pop shops that you have. So my door is always going to be open to you uh, in helping work with you and SBS as we determine uh, how to improve the shopping experience. And my last question to you, anyone in your commercial corridor received a, sign, a violation for illegal signs? Have you been a subject to that bombardment? Signage? Yes, signage. Yes, uh, I mean, yes, we are, because as, uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, for the past two years, we have hold uh, business fairs, and in that fair, we invite all the city agencies to help out, and we invite us, we also invite the uh, local business and the property owners to attend and to resolve their fines. I'm so far that... You do know that there is a, uh, we were able to get in this year, moratorium, moratorium back on the books exactly. and a refund for those businesses that received violations that paid the violations. I am not sure if you've uh, informed your commercial corridor uh, that they, that we're re-looking at the law now and assessing the changes that have to be made. If they paid a fine or were given a violation, Correct. they may be entitled to a refund and also to be aware of the fact that there are new legislation that's gonna be coming down in store compliance. Those fines, Chairman, were between $5,000 and $20,000 per store. There is no mom and pop shop that can prepare for such a violation. Um, and I, my, I will continue to offer my services uh, to you as uh, you help fight for those small businesses and get them the refunds that they need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for the record, according to the uh, budget, I think they're going to spend uh, 566000 on supplemental sanitation services um, and um, $60,000 on marketing, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that the supplemental sanitation is basically for sweeping and bagging and uh, emptying trash cans. Am I right? Yes. It's not for the pick up and take away of garbage. Yes, because... Uh, uh we do the sidewalks, and uh, I just like what you said. So uh, it's uh, to help the local business to keep the sidewalk clean, so the pedestrian can have a clear pathway to walk, and to improve uh, our our business district. Yeah, it has really improved the district a lot. You know, I, I go there quite often, and it, it, it's needed. So thank you. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Seeing none, I thank you for coming in, and we do have another witness who wants to uh, speak. So thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay, we have Bruce Jacobs. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Bruce Jacobs, Coalition of the Rockaways and Southeast Queens, fighter for the Rockaways, fighter for Southeast Queens, and fighter for medical and religious freedom. I have, I have a problem with this. First of all, it says something about to notify them in a newspaper. How could every real person of property be notified? That's impossible just by putting a little article. 
Another problem here is that from 380000 to $1 million, that's a lot of money when people in other neighborhoods can't get nothing. So that's a little bit off. Now, why is this people running this district? In my opinion, that's like kind of extorting the people because you have to be in cahoots with these guys to get anything done. If you're gonna put that they're gonna run the businesses when not everybody is under there, what about the mom and pop stores? What about you know, the regular people from that neighborhood? How do they really feel? Now, another thing like uh, Mark was saying, the police, the sanitation, the pickup of garbage, the, the, that's gonna come back to the city. Why ain't these guys putting some of this million dollars into these services? Because these services will cost a lot of money. Police claim that they can't even do their jobs now. So who's gonna be the security in that neighborhood when people are walking by and stuff? My thing is that I don't like any kind of corporation running the business district. It just doesn't work. I like to see the responses of these private business people. How do they really feel about this? Are these guys getting some kind of fee from these business to get things approved? I understand the neighborhood, you know, political neighborhood. It, it, it can't be just given to them because of, to expand the district. They're not happy with the, with the $380,000. They don't want to take any responsibility for police, sanitation, and all that. And why are they the representatives of this neighborhood? It just doesn't make sense, because they say they don't even have an exact amount of businesses that they're really running. Maybe there's somebody else that's stronger or the same as them, and people that lived there for 50, 60 years, or whatever they lived, they, they have rights also. I just don't believe in passing it on to go automatic to these guys, because how are they really representing the neighborhood? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to ask the clerk, uh, Billy, to uh, call the vote. Billy Martin. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance, instruction 113A and land use items 611 and 612. By the way, I meant to uh, um, acknowledge and introduce our Majority Leader, Lori Cumbo, has joined us. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to briefly explain? Thank you. Yes, I'm Mr. sorry. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, good morning, uh, colleagues. I just wanted to just speak in favor of Councilmember Bradlander's bill that relates to the capital uh, tracker system. It has been a long journey, and the last time the subcommittee held a hearing, we learned that the Mayor's Office of Operations really maintains the existing database, which unfortunately has a minimum threshold of 20 $5 million. So many of our capital projects do not apply and are not therefore on this database. And this bill is really an opportunity to enhance the responsibilities of the Mayor's Office of Operations, provide them with the sufficient staff they need, and really for all of us, those of us that are in PB and our capital allocations that are under 25 million, which most are, to make sure that there is a mechanism by which residents can follow capital projects through the process. So I'm grateful this bill is coming to the floor. We will continue to work with the Mayor's Office of Operations on its implementation, and I vote aye on all of today's agenda items. Thank you. Carnegie. Aye. Cumbo. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Rosenthal. Van Bramer. Aye. Gordenchik. Permission just to briefly explain my vote, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes. I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Yu and Ms. Lee, and I know um, how hard uh, we fought originally to establish the flushing bid. There were not, everybody wasn't convinced, but it has made a sea change in flushing. Um, I call it the snow cone effect when, you know, the garbage cans overflow. Flushing's a very windy place because it's right near the water, and um, it has made a tremendous difference um, in, in the perception and how flushing looks, and I congratulate you on that. I also want to congratulate Brad Lander on the Capitol Tracker. Um, 
I don't know who said it. It may have been Churchill. Sunlight is the best of disinfectants. And even the little information that we get now is a lot. Uh, it helps me a lot in my work. And I'm sure this bill will go a long way to uh, help us all and the citizens of our city um, to see what's going on in their community. So with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Adams. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Moya. Aye. Powers. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Mario. A vote of 14 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Items on today's agenda have been adopted. Thank you. All right. Okay, thank you very much. And with that, this meeting is adjourned at 11.16 in the morning. That's okay. Yeah, what are you going to do? It's all these late people. You like me. <laughs>